Welcome to the 3D Printing Module. My name is Jeff Abel. I'm an engineering and ECAD instructor at Century College. The objective of this training module is to take an individual with no previous experience and give them enough knowledge to be able to print basic 3D parts. For more information regarding the Fab Lab at Century College, please visit the website century.edu backslash fab lab. For more information regarding the 3D printing process, please consider taking the class ECAD 1025, How to Make Almost Anything. Let's go over the general process used to print a 3D part. We're not going to talk about the specific machines, but go over a general overview of the process. The first step in printing a 3D part is to have an electronic part file that you want to print. This is an STL file type. This is typically created in a CAD design software package like SOLIDWORKS, Inventor, or Creo. It can also be created in a creative design software package like Mudbox, 3ds Max, or Rhino. This part file will be loaded into the printer control software for the specific 3D printer. Once the part is loaded, the size and orientation needs to be configured. Then the print parameters need to be set. This includes the print density and layer resolution. Then the part is ready to be added to the pack or print job. Before we print, the printer needs to be set. This includes making sure the printer is on, initialize the printer, loading the print tray, and making sure that there's enough print material for the job. At this point, the part can be printed. Once the part is complete, the print tray can be removed from the printer. The part needs to be carefully removed from the print tray. The support material needs to be removed from the part. What you're left with is your final 3D printed part. The Dimension is a commercial grade professional machine. Much of the initialization and calibration is done automatically. It can also feed two different material types. Typically, it is configured to have one material to be the part material and the other to be the support material. Both work with ABS and PLA plastics. Next, we're going to talk about the step-by-step -step procedure for using the Dimension Elite printer. First thing we need to do is to log on to the computer that the Dimension Elite is connected to. Once you log in, we'll need to start the printer software. For the Dimension, it is Catalyst EX 4.2. Double click on that. Once the software is loaded, we're going to load our part. We load our part by going up to the File menu, Open STL, and then we're going to navigate to find your file. In this case, I have my file right here, and I'm going to click Open. It is preferred that your STL file be stored on a flash drive that you can put into the computer. Next, we need to set the size and orientation of the part. As it is loaded in on the screen here, to set the orientation, we click on the Orientation tab up in the upper left-hand corner. And typically, what we will do is we'll use the Auto Orient. We can click on the Auto Orient tab, and that will automatically orient the part in kind of a preferred printing orientation. Sometimes it'll put it in an orientation that you don't want it to print in, and we will need to manually change it. So in this case, I will, uh, my part is not in the correct orientation, and I'm going to manually rotate it. And at, down here in the bottom, we can see our X, Y, and Z axes. And what I want to do is rotate this part about the X axis 90 degrees. So what we need to do is come over to our degree, set it for 90, and then we're going to rotate about what axis. And in this case, we're going to rotate about the X axis. Now that we have our part in the correct orientation, what we're going to do is set the print parameters. We're going to go back to the General tab. And now this has the properties that we need to set. First one is layer resolution. This has two different options, and one being 0 0.007, the other one being 0 0.01. Uh, the, the smaller one gives you a finer resolution, so if there's more detail, you can use that. If you don't have as much detail, you can use the 0 0.01. That'll make a faster print. So in this case, I'm going to select the finer one. Next is model interior. So inside of this object is a fill. The density of this fill is defined by this selection. We have three different options, one being solid, the next being sparse high density, next being sparse low density. The difference being is that the solid uses the most material, sparse low density uses the least amount of material. 
So depending on what you want to use the part for, if you want some strength to it, you may want to use solid. If it's just for aesthetics, you could use the low density and use less material. In this case, I'm going to set this to be sparse, low density. Support fill, there is a few different options here. We're going to always use the default to the smart. Number of copies, in this case, we're always going to have a number of copies of one. Our STL units are set to inches and our STL scale is set to one. In this case, if our part was made in millimeters, we could set this to be millimeters to verify that we have the part at the right size. And to verify that the part is at the right size, we can take a look down at the STL size down in the lower left-hand corner here, and it shows that our X dimension is one inch, Y dimension is one inch, and our Z dimension is 1.17. And that is the dimensions that I had made this part. I could scale this up by changing the scale. If I wanted to make this double the size, I don't need to make the part bigger, I can just scale it and I can change this to be two. And when I change that, now you can see my X, Y, and Z dimensions have changed to be twice as large as before. So I'm gonna change this back to one because I only wanna print the small one. Now we have our part in the right orientation. We have our print properties all set. We are now ready to add this to the pack. So at the bottom of the screen here, it says add to pack. We will click that button and it will process the part. It will go through, it will come up with the path for the uh, material, and it'll also come up with the support material. I'm gonna continue to finish processing the part. It is now all done. That has been added to the pack. So if we go up and click on our pack tab up at the top, our part is shown in the center of the screen here. By default, it is shown in the center, and this screen here actually is the print tray that we've loaded into the, or that we will be loading into the uh, printer itself. Most of the time by default, this, def this center position is okay, but if we did wanna move it for some reason, we can actually just click on it and drag it and locate it in a different location. Now that we've processed our part, we're gonna make sure the dimension printer is ready to accept it. First thing that we need to do is make sure that we have our material loaded. There's two black trays that have the material. They should be in and secure. If they're loose or they're missing, please see the lab manager and he'll come over and make sure the material is loaded properly. The next thing we need to do is load our material tray, or our print tray. The new print trays are located below the printer, down here. Now we have our new print tray. You should always be using a new print tray. A used print tray sometimes has residual material which can damage the machine if used. The only time that we'll use a used print tray is that if it's been cleaned completely and the lab manager has approved that it is sufficiently clean to be used in the, in the printer. But we're going to use a new print tray. So now that we have the tray, we're gonna load it into the machine. We're gonna open the door. We're gonna hold the tray by its handle there are four restrain, restraining tabs. We're going to place that on the bed. The tabs will engage and we need to push the tray forward. Once it's pushed all the way forward, we're going to turn the restraining tabs to lock it into place. Now our tray is loaded. We're gonna close the door. The printer is now ready to go. Now that the printer is ready to print, let's verify that we have enough material for our print job. If we take a look at the pack tab, on the right hand side, it shows model material, support material, and time. For our model, it says we need 0.133 cubic inches of model material, 0.11 cubic inches of support material, and it shows that it will take one hour and four minutes to print this job. We can take a look at the amount of material that the printer has. Up at the top here, it shows our Dimension Elite printer. The material, the model material is 7.54 cubic inches. Support material is 13.94 cubic inches. We have plenty of material for our print job. So in this case, we're ready to print. So to print, we'll come down to the lower right-hand corner and we will click on the print button. This will then send our electronic file or our print file to the printer.
Now we can go back to our part, press print. The print, the part is now being sent to the printer. Over here, it'll ask us, has the part been removed? Because we had opened the door and put a new tray in, it's asking, has the old part been removed? And we'll say yes. Now it's going to ask us, start model. And we will say yes, we want to start the model, push the button. And now our print is started. The machine will go through an initialization phase. It'll take a little bit of time, heat up, and then it will start printing our part. Now that the part is done printing, we're going to remove it from the machine. First thing we'll do is we'll open up our door, but we're going to wait because the machine is hot and we don't want to touch any of the metal inside of it. So we're just going to want to turn the restraining tabs and grab the handle and pull it out. Now we have the tray with our printed part on it. The next step is to remove the printed part off of our tray and we're going to do that on the workbench over here. Now that we have our part, we're going to remove it from the tray. The objective is it's to remove the part from the tray without damaging our part. And to do this, we're going to use a bench hook at the workbench. We're going to use a scraper and we may need to use a little mallet also. But before we start to remove the part, we need to make sure that we have safety glasses. So grab your safety glasses, make sure you have them on. Once you have those on, then we can start removing our part. We're going to take our scraper, we're going to take our tray, we'll place the scraper flat down at the base of our part on the tray, we'll hold it up at an angle and push it into our bench hook. This is going to add our support so it doesn't slide out on us. At this point, we can try to remove it by hand. You can try tapping on it. Sometimes it'll pop right off. Otherwise, we can use the mallet to give it a little extra, uh, little extra force. Now that we have our part, we can then remove the support material and take it over to the clean station. Now that we have our part removed off of our tray, we want to make sure that we have our tools cleaned up and the area swept up with any uh, support material that may have broken off during the removal process. Now we're going to take our part and actually put it into our clean station. The clean station is actually going to dissolve the brown support material and leave us only with our white material. In this case, we're going to put our part into the clean station. We want to make sure the part, the, the clean station is on. And we also have a small bag that can be used for some small parts, or if you have multiple parts, it'll make it easier to remove later on. In this case, I'm not going to use this. We open the top. We're then going to place our part inside carefully. Try not to get any splatter. We can then drop the top back down. And then we need to start the clean station up. And we're going to hit the button, the down arrow, and it will set it for a four hour agitation. Now that the cycle is complete, we can remove our part from the clean station. First, we're going to need to grab a tray from the sink area. And we also need to grab our tongs below the clean station. And we need to put on a pair of safety gloves that is also stored below the clean station. We put the gloves on because the solution to dissolve the material can irritate our skin. So we'll bring our tray over. We'll then lift up the top. Find our part, we'll grab our part, we'll knock off any excess fluid, put the top back down carefully, place our part on our tray, put the tongs back. Now we can take the tray and our part over to the sink to be rinsed. Now that we've removed our part from the clean station, we're gonna rinse the part off. We're gonna take our part, set our tray down. You can hold it right in your gloved hand Turn the water on. All we're trying to do is get all the solution off of the part. So you just want to rinse it completely. Once it's rinsed sufficiently, turn the water off. Set our part down right the, on the edge of the sink. At this point, we can remove our gloves. Congratulations, you have your final printed part. <laughs>